statement issued by the Ministry of Health dismissing the real concerns facing Bermudian seniors in our nursing rest homes is deeply troubling. Before we can fight an issue, we must face it, and if the government refuses to face the real cases of abuse, neglect, and poor treatment in the facilities they have been entrusted to oversee, then how will they ever be addressed? The statement reads in part, government's role is one of, of enforcement of the residential care homes and nursing homes regulations, carried out by a team of professionals led by the National Office for Seniors and Physically Challenged. Every statement following this sentence is lacking in integrity. If there, were, if there are spot checks on nursing homes with written reports and recommendations for improvement, why are there so many private nursing homes on the island that are in breach of regulations, making them little more than tombs for the living? A small number of residential and nursing care homes of varying standards exist on the island. Some of these homes are in breach of the Residential Care Homes and Nursing Homes Act. The Act states that there shall be a nurse on duty at the home for not less than eight hours a day and a nurse on call for the rest of the time in each day. An operator shall employ in a home a registered dietitian who shall be responsible for planning and approving appropriate diets for the residents of the home. The operator shall provide daily at least three meals that are nutritious and suited to the special needs of the residents. The operator shall designate a staff member to be responsible for managing activities and supervising volunteers. That person shall have such qualifications and experience as the chief medical officer considers appropriate. Current complaints include, from one person says, my non-diabetic uncle had a black toenail, and then his foot became infected. They wouldn't do anything about it, although I told them over and over again it was hurting him. By the time they took him to the hospital, his leg was black, and they had to amputate. I did complain, but nothing happened. Another writes, I complained that my brother wasn't fed or washed, that he had huge bed sores and was lying on hard mattresses. I and others, even health care professionals, complained over to the National Office of Seniors. They didn't do anything except tell the nursing home once to do better, but nothing improved and they didn't follow it up. My mother had only cold water to wash with since she has entered the nursing home some two months ago. They tied my brother to his bed with a leather strap at night. One day they gave me a bill for a new strap because they said he had broken it. They didn't need to tie him up. He was immobile after having a stroke. They gave my brother, this another fella, gave my brother cold noodles and sometimes chopped up hot dogs. They hardly had any fresh fruit or vegetables once they had some salad. Sometimes we get only a sandwich from 5 o'clock till breakfast the next day. The food is so bad, we sometimes flush it down the toilet. My grandmother is made to sit in a circle in the same chair all day. She doesn't get the chance to get up, walk around, or be active. I'm worried that she isn't getting any fresh air. She's been two years sitting in the same chair, looking at the same faces, except when somebody dies. I spoke to the manager, but nothing has changed. Then I visited to see some residents tied up by belts, and propped up in a chair for hours. It looked horribly uncomfortable, as they were slumped right over. It's always the same people whenever I visit. You wouldn't treat, treat people in prison like that. The staff took him by his collar and shook him, like they were choking him. They banged on his bed rails with a spoon while they were feeding him, bang, 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 to try to get him to eat faster. His watch disappeared, then his radio, and then his dentures. They said, well, his watch was only a cheap one, and his dentures didn't fit. When we moved him, I asked for his clothes, and they gave me a bundle of rags that weren't even his. There is constant verbal abuse. One staff member was caught choking a patient. Another patient was slapped by a staff member. Patients are pulled and jerked. Some are forced down on the toilet. I went to the National Office for Seniors 
and the physically challenged and complain over and over again about my father's rough nursing home treatment until they eventually agreed to meet me. They spoke to me as if I were a criminal and that they were judged. Nothing was done. My father died. I'm still angry about this. I went to the National Office for Seniors to complain about a resident in an atrocious condition who obviously needed immediate medical attention. Others also complained about his condition. He was so neglected that a complaint had been made to the police. The National Office for Seniors never got back to me. The manager said they did not respond, no, they did respond to the police, sorry. I have spoken to the patients, this is the National Office for Seniors, that I've spoken to the patient's GP who feels there is no need to move him. The patient was transported by a charity to another facility and immediately assessed by their doctor as suffering from malnutrition, dehydration, and an immediate need of nursing care. The above concerns are all recent and unsolicited. If there are procedures in place for complaints to be satisfactorily investigated, why are so many problems going unanswered? Why do so many families feel that complaining is useless? Why is it that the National Office for Seniors only issues recommendations for addressing problems? An independent body should be empowered to issue directives with a timeline for their implementation and penalties for noncompliance. I think it's time that we, sh we should have an inquiry into the stake of the rest in nursing homes and the care of its patients. Thank you. Um. You, or have you highlighted these breaches that you 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 see more these individuals who contact you being said unsolicited? Uh, have you highlighted any of these breaches to the authorities? No. Um, some people don't want to give names um, because of that fear, and I think that's why I'm calling for an inquiry um, where the those that give information are protected because there's some stuff going on in that place. You know, one place charges uh, residents $150 a month extra for toiletries. And another place gave them peanut butter and jam sandwiches for dinner and said, if you don't like it, tell your family to bring something in for you. This is this is type of stuff that's going on. And you know, this is not a, a PLP problem or OBA problem. We need all need to come together and fix this. It's OK saying you was in government for 14 years. Well, it's enough blame to go wrong. I prefer to get, let's fix this first, then we could talk about who to blame, you know. So who would uh, spearhead this inquiry? Well, you know, I would ask the governor to, to, to set it up as an independent person. Do you want to expand upon what else can be done to, to fix the problem in, in your view? Well, if you had an independent body that, that travels around these rest homes on a, you know, uh, um, steady basis to see what's going on, how people are talking to, talking to some of the patients. Uh, they can, and get back to people, just non-partial, not, not government, not PLP. I suppose I, you'll ask, how can you get that? But you can get some people that will do the job. Is that important because do you feel like if it was an in-house government um, investigation that maybe some individuals would be a little bit um, hesitant to kind of indict their own departments that are supposed to be overseeing these things. Is that, is that yes, why? because you saw the you saw the response on Saturday from the government about the press conference I had. I spoke to the minister on Friday. I showed the minister some graphic pictures. I showed the minister I gave a copy of a death certificate, where one of the one of the recent causes of death to this particular patient was severe. Malnutrition. How and confident are you that today's event is going to spur government into taking any more serious action, bearing in mind that you at the top you criticize government for being insensitive? Well, you know, I think the people will move because everywhere I go when I see seniors, particularly those that have loved ones in these homes, they give me encouragement. And I don't intend to let this rest because if all of us live long enough. Maybe three of us in here will be in a home. And, you know, we want to treat people with dignity. Um, you know, why? Because somebody's ill, 
that they don't get treated decent. As long as they're breathing, they should be treated like me and you. One of the comments from government was that there is a need for more senior schools on the island. Mm -hmm. What do you attribute that to? Real concern or? More, more homes needed? Well, in fact, the last census was held in 2010. The projection for 2000, 2020, 2020, is that seniors population would increase by 38 percent. And it's, it's all over. In fact, in the UK, Alzheimer's and, and dementia, they pay $34 billion a year to, to, to deal with this situation. That's more than they spend for cancer and, and heart, heart disease.